Hey, how's it going? It's Keith Townsend from the CTO Advisor. You know what? I hope you've rested up. If you're in the U.S. and you enjoyed your Thanksgiving holiday, happy Thanksgiving. However, it's time to get back on it. And next week is AWS reInvent. The other hyperscalers are not sitting back and waiting on AWS to take up all of the energy. Of course, I'll be hosting theCUBE and having incredible sets of interviews with companies ranging from Stratoscale to VMware to the whole ecosystem at reInvent. However, before we get into reInvent, there's a couple of big announcements within the industry that I wanted to get at. First, Microsoft, the hyperscaler that we mentioned earlier, when I hinted to the hyperscalers are not sitting back waiting on AWS to take up all the announcements, Microsoft has announced that they will now support VMware vSphere bare metal in Azure. Is this another VMware on AWS, but VMware on Azure? Not exactly. Microsoft is taking a book out of a smaller competitor's playbook, Nutanix. Nutanix, if you remember, announced that they would be supporting HPE servers, Cisco servers, without the blessing of HPE and Cisco directly. So what does that mean? It means that you have to support or you have to trust Microsoft, and in Nutanix's case, Nutanix, fully in supporting a what's essentially, essentially an x86-based workload. You know, vSphere should work on just about any approved x86 platform. So if the industry is right and Azure is running a bunch of HP ProLiant servers in their data center, there shouldn't be a whole lot of difference in supporting vSphere inside of Azure's data center and Microsoft's data center than what Rackspace does inside of Rackspace's data center. The big difference, however, is integration. VMware and AWS did an awful lot of work to get VMware vSphere to run inside of an AWS data center. And this is not an easy feat. VMware uses completely different networking, a completely different network stack than AWS and both Azure. So Microsoft had to kind of go at shoehorning this alone. I expect big announcements from VMware and AWS's partnership next week and the type of innovation and integration that really doesn't happen when you go at it alone and don't partner with the other vendor. So what does this mean? I think essentially when you looked at the blog post from Microsoft, this was about migration. This definitely wasn't about taking your vSphere infrastructure and running it long term inside of Azure. This was a step towards migrating your workloads from vSphere to Azure, you're sitting your workloads close to your Azure infrastructure and you could easily move from one platform to another via a high-speed network. This isn't a long-term play. Therefore, if you're looking for AWS and vSphere type integration in Azure, I wouldn't look that far. I, I, I haven't gotten enough details to find out where one wins and where one loses. But basically, this isn't a long-term play. Now, back to the Nutanix thing. Should you trust HPE, Cisco hardware with a relationship with Nutanix that isn't a proper OEM support model? You know, it depends on the workload and your, your tolerance for risk. A lot of organizations want heavy-duty, non-stop support. They want these relationships that they have either one choke the throat is the term, or they have a tight partnership that if they call either vendor, they get equal levels of support no matter which vendor they call. If you're that type of organization, you should probably stay away from these types of deals. But if you're an organization that you're like, you know what, I, I, we have skill, we have differentiating infrastructure team support that can go in and really troubleshoot x86 down to you know what there's not enough thermal paste on the x86 core on the x86 processor and we need support 
that, you know what, maybe you're a little bit safer and go on with one of these unsupported hybrid modes. That's it for this CTO Advisor Daily Dose. I am looking forward to AWS reInvent. If there's something you want to see special from the coverage, we'll be having sponsored po podcasts from uh, Druva Inc., Dados Inc., and Cohesity. If you notice, there's a theme there around data protection companies. If there's another company you'd like to see me interview outside of the cube or outside of the sponsored post on the CTO Advisor Daily Dose, let me know on Twitter, at CTO Advisor on Twitter. And you can look me up on LinkedIn. Of course, the blog is thectoadvisor.com. Talk to you next CTO Daily Dose.